Hi, my name is Daryl Peterson and I'm the manager of the Applications Engineering Department here at MicroMeasurements. This afternoon I'd like to take a few minutes and show you another type of half bridge circuit. This particular one is known as the Poisson uh, half bridge. If we take a look at the sketch, what we have is a simple cantilevered beam, load applied at one end and it's fixed at the other. And if you look closely, you'll see that there are two strain gauges on this beam, one turned perpendicular to the other. R1 is down along the long axis of the cantilevered beam, where R4 is turned in the transverse direction. As we apply load, given here as P, what we would find is that R1 would sense a tensile load down along the length, and R4 would pick up a compressive load. The ratio of those two effectively is your Poisson ratio. So if R1 were to see a positive 1,000 microstrain of change, R4 would see minus 300 microstrain of change, assuming that your Poisson ratio is equal to 0.3. Now in this particular example, we've taken these two strain gauges and we've wired them into one channel or one Wheatstone bridge. If you look closely, you'll see that R1 is wired between P plus and S minus, and R4 is wired between S minus and P minus. If we get a thousand microstrain, let's use that example, if we get a thousand microstrain between P plus and S minus, and minus 300 between S minus and P minus, then our total Wheatstone bridge output is effectively a thousand minus a negative 300, which means it's 1300. So what that tells us is that if we assume a plus on ratio of 0.3, then we're increasing our output by 30%, and that typically is a good thing. Oftentimes in strain gauge measurements, you look for ways to try to improve or in increase your output uh, just to get more signal. So one of the reasons you may use this type of circuit is also for its temperature compensation ability. If these two gauges are the same and they're mounted on the same material, and that material is homogeneous and isotropic, it's consistent, it expands the same in both directions, then what we should find is that both R1 and R4 would generate about the same response due to any temperature changes. And if that is true, a Wheatstone bridge will take the difference between those two gauges and effectively nulls out our temperature response or thermal output. So again, this type of circuit increases the electrical output by about 30% and also can cancel unwanted effects such as thermal output. Now in this particular case, this circuit would be sensitive to bending or axial loads because as you start to uh, compress this, say for example, you treated it like a column and you were to compress it, what you'd find is that as you started pushing in R1 would see compression, but R4 would see tension. And going through the Wheatstone Bridge, those signals would effectively add together. So in this type of circuit, it's sensitive to both bending loads and axial loads. However, it'll cancel side and torsional loads, assuming that you've done a really good job of orientation of the strain gauges, getting them aligned properly, and getting them in the center of the beam. If we look at the number of active arms, even though we've got two strain gauges mounted on the surface, both gauges are not contributing the same magnitude. One's about 30% of the other. So if we wanted to calculate the number of active arms, we would calculate that by N is equal to 1 plus the Poisson ratio. Assuming it's 0.3, that means that our number of active arms is 1.3, which effectively means that our indicated output is 1.3 times greater than what the actual strain is in that beam. This is just another example of a half bridge. There are some others, and if you'd like to find out more about Wheatstone Bridge or strain gauges in general, take a look at our website at www.micro-measurements.com. Thank you.